I noticed something. There's a lot to notice when it comes to M. Night Shyamalan. His cameos in his movies, the Philadelphia settings, the catchphrases, and of course, the twists. But I noticed something that goes beneath the obvious, a pattern that runs through most of his work. And I saw it right here. It's called a reborn doll. We lost Jericho when he was 13 weeks. Just didn't wake up one morning, poor little guy. Dorothy took it hard. She was catatonic for weeks, full psychotic break. And this, uh, this was the only thing that brought her back. Dorothy took it hard. She was catatonic for weeks, full psychotic break. And this, uh, this was the only thing that brought her back. This is a moment from the pilot episode of the Apple TV Plus original series, Servant. Directed by Shyamalan, Servant begins with a question. Do you think this is her? A perfect setup for a show about hidden motives and questioned identities. This pilot is a great reminder that Shyamalan, for all the problems critics have had with his writing throughout the years, is still an extremely gifted visual storyteller. As the pilot unfolds, we learn that Dorothy Turner believes this doll is her little Jericho, a narrative Sean and the nanny help facilitate. In other words, Dorothy Turner is telling herself a story. And this story has great effects on her own life and on the lives of those around her. And this is the insight I noticed that connects all of Shyamalan's films together. M. Night Shyamalan is drawn to stories about the power of belief and how the stories we tell ourselves drastically alter the world we live in. Let me show you. Let's start at the beginning. Shyamalan's first two films were Praying with Anger as a Film Student and Wide Awake. These films are not well known, but they do display the theme of belief. But the pattern really kicks into gear with Shyamalan's third film, a lesser known gem that, you know, snuck under the radar called... Okay, so you probably already see where this is going, but let me just spell it out. The Sixth Sense tells the story of Malcolm Crowe, a psychologist working with a boy named Cole Sear who, you know... I see dead people. Exactly. From his conversations with Cole, Malcolm learns that the dead walk around completely unaware of their fate because they only see what they want to see. They only see what they want to see. Ding, ding, ding. There it is. Did you catch it? That's the same thing. The stories we tell ourselves drastically alter the world we live in. Which then leads to the revelation at the center of probably the most famous twist in recent cinema. You know. Bruce Willis was a ghost, y'all. He was dead the whole time. What? Shyamalan's next film, Signs, is about a priest who loses his faith after the tragic loss of his wife in a car accident. Her death leads him to believe that the world is random, meaningless, and cruel. See, what you have to ask yourself is what kind of person are you? Are you the kind that sees signs? But... Signs of an alien invasion lead him to embrace his faith once again and believe that all the random coincidences in his past were actually, again, signs that can help him protect his family in the present. Swing away, Meryl. At each moment in his life, the story he told himself about the world drastically altered how he lived. I never told you the last words that Colleen said before they let her die. She said, see. There it is again, and we can keep going. In The Elders of Covington create a story about those we don't speak of, the monsters that roam the woods outside the village. They do this as a way to keep the people trapped in their imagined 19th century community. This story they told themselves, and that the elders told the community, this belief is used as a prison. And I don't think it's a coincidence that the one who is blind ends up seeing the most. 
in The Lady in the Water, the power of stories is literally literalized. An apartment superintendent discovers a narf named, wait for it, my name is Story. Story, who is destined to find the writer, or vessel, who will write a book that will eventually save humanity. One of the tenants of the apartment complex, Young Soon, recognizes the narf for her mother's bedtime stories, and the rest of the tenants take on archetypical roles to save the lady in the water. Now, after The Lady in the Water, Shyamalan's career takes a bit of a turn, so we're going to skip a few movies for now, just to keep the momentum going. The Visit reminds us that families are full of stories. When a child is disowned, what is that? Well, it's a belief. You can't change your DNA or leave a family, but you can tell yourself a narrative about your family. Or, like the kids in the film are doing, make your own home movie. These stories can then prevent us from healing, and they can open the door for strangers to lie their way into our trust. In other words, trust itself can be a story, and one that can be weaponized. Those aren't your grandparents. Yuval Noah Harari calls these stories we tell ourselves intersubjective realities. They are constructs that shape our societies and rely on our shared imaginations. But what exactly is M. Night Shyamalan trying to say with all this? And why is this theme so prevalent in his work? Well, to answer those questions, we have to look at the movies I skipped over. No, not these movies. The Unbreakable Trilogy. Unbreakable, Split, and Glass wear this theme concerning the stories we tell ourselves like a bright spandex costume. It's here, in these films, that Shyamalan's obsession with belief and self-narrative takes center stage. There's an interesting parallel between Malcolm Crowe in The Sixth Sense and David Dunn in Unbreakable, besides the fact that they were each played by Bruce Willis. Both characters only see what they want to see. To be unaware of your own death or of your own super strength requires a pretty active practice of denial. In other words, they both told themselves a story. What prevented David from becoming the overseer prior to the events of Unbreakable? His own belief. That belief is then, well, shattered when Elijah asks him, When's the last time I was sick? Do you remember? Which is a curious question coming from Elijah, somebody who's been sick every day of his life with a brittle bone disease. Elijah had to confront the story that other people told about him. But unlike David, Elijah challenges this narrative. He spends his life looking for a way to tell his own story, to find a purpose behind his condition. Now that we know who you are, I know who I am. We become the stories that we tell about ourselves. Case in point, starting around 2008 with the release of The Happening, something changed for Shyamalan. As his movies became less and less popular with both critics and the general audience, he went from cinematic champion to relative oblivion. The marketing campaign on After Earth even removed his name from the poster. It was in this moment that Shyamalan became like one of his own protagonists, struggling with internal and external narratives. But ultimately, the power of M. Night Shyamalan's example is this. We hold the pen that writes our story. In Split, Casey and Kevin have both suffered abuses and struggled with how that trauma warps not only how they see themselves, but how others see them as well. Like David and Elijah from Unbreakable, Casey is confronted with a story, a narrative of abuse, and she must decide if she'll take back her own story. She can choose to see herself as broken and weak, or she could see her strength. The broken are the more evolved. Split is about taking back the power society robs from us through labeling. And in a similar yet different sense, Shyamalan took back the narrative of his career through this movie. He bet on himself with the visit and split by financing the movies with his own money, even taking out a loan on his house for the visit. For Shyamalan, our potential is limited only by the belief we have in ourselves, which is exactly the theme the final film in the trilogy explores thoroughly. Glass centers around three protagonists being convinced by a psychiatrist that they aren't super in any way. Once again, the main threat is the story they're being told about themselves. In Glass, Shyamalan culminates his exploration of identity and belief. And in the finale, M. Night Shyamalan reinforces the theme that he's always been obsessed with. 
what we see, or in this case, being seen. He went through the basement tunnels to be seen by as many cameras as possible. That's why he didn't go out the side entrance. He was never planning on going to that building. This was a suicide mission. I gave him all the cameras he needed right here. One could even read the final moments of the film as his own answer to the years of self-doubt that he probably endured. In super meta fashion, the surviving protagonists take back their narrative from the institutions and groups that suppress them by showcasing the truth in a video they release to the public. Or, to put it another way, they tell their own story by releasing a movie. Sound familiar? For M. Night Shyamalan, the world is a confrontation of varying beliefs and narratives. Systems and groups, even individuals, suppress others through labels and identities. But his work consistently reminds us that we are not passive players in these dramas. What we believe about ourselves is what we will see. I believe that if everyone sees what just a few people become when they wholly embrace their gifts, others will awaken. And what we see, we will become. Belief in oneself is contagious. We hold the pen that writes our story. What will your story be? Thank you so much for watching this video and for making it this far. I think it's safe to say that you and I both really enjoy M. Night Shyamalan and his work. At least, I know I like talking about it. But if you would like to dive deeper on this topic and talk with me and a group of eight or so other people on Zoom in a real conversation, then you can check out the link in the description for a new service called Laces. Laces is a social media platform that hosts better conversations online. Join guided conversations via Zoom with like-minded people on topics that you're passionate about. These sessions are hosted and guided by a subject matter expert. I guess that would be me. And each discussion is limited to a hand-picked group of 10 participants who have to pass an application process. This is a great way to make new friends and to dig deeper on a topic that you love, but that your friends are probably tired of hearing about. Once again, you can click the link in the description, look at the times that we have available, pick the one that's best for you, and then join me and a hand-selected group of other people in a real conversation about this topic as we explore M. Night Shyamalan and the power of belief. I hope to see you there.